little bit of a small hiatus, really. A little bit longer than I would have wanted, but there has been a reason. In the last four months, I have completely changed job professions and therefore have had no time to talk about anything important like Transformers news or toys or releases or anything like that. So that's pretty much been my life for the last four months, retraining from retail to a completely different field. So my bad? In the intermittent time that that has all happened, Hasbro has dropped some uh, rather juicy tidbits concerning the Last of the Kingdom lineup and several selects and also the Legacy line. Yeah, I know, the Legacy line. We're going to get back to that in just a second. But first, what's Hasbro's deal with releasing one figure in the last of the line and then re-releasing it in the brand new line in less than 12 months? Good? Bad? On the plus side, Blasty does look pretty damn good, but until he's in hand, can we say he's good? Eh, the blaster from the promotional shots does look good and gives us a small, small inkling over what the next line, Legacy, will hold as far as gimmicks are concerned. And that's pretty much translucent plastic. Not going to call it too soon, but this could be the Generation 2 Gold Plastic Syndrome of the future. So, I'm calling it on this one. Again, promotional shots aside, I just thought to get back into putting anything up on YouTube, i just delve a little bit into the promotional shots and the information that we have, or I have so far, over the Legacy line, and just giving a quick brief skim over of what could be good, what could be bad, what could be mediocre, highs, lows, and anything else I can think of. Firstly, the Legacy logo, mm, at first, didn't really sit well with, at least me and a few comments that I saw online, didn't really sit well with people, but after the Prime Wars trilogy and the War for Cybertron trilogy and having very generic gunmetal grey bold black text on silver backgrounds or something of the similar like, Legacy actually looks pretty good. Legacy is a bit of a breath of fresh air if I'm going to be honest. I also like the colorization, the reds and purples and blues blended in to kind of create a glowing effect with the matrix on the bottom of the Legacy kind of connecting everything together as if a way of saying yeah, until all are one. Yeah. However, the PulseCon promo photo, which we've been getting with Transformers products for the past year or so now, kind of a weird one in my opinion. The Kingdom one was very much in the same vein as the original toys, like from the 80s with the back of the card and you've got pretty much all the products on one picture in a kind of dynamic, artistic, weird fun style in order to just promote what it's actually selling but this one you've got a weird planet which i assume is cybertron in some kind of swirly effect underneath obviously on one side you have the orbots and the other side you have decepticons some of which we've already seen others like megatron and thundercracker and hot rod i don't really know how they're going to fit into the new line or if they're going to be part of the cartoon if they're going to make that for netflix uh, not holding out any hope for that. But the ones that really intrigue me are the ones like Iguanas. Because being from the Pretenders line, you could have had it gone either way. You could have had a monster form more in the vein of the Headmasters and Horicons. Or you could have gone full on robot and just used the figure inside of what was the Pretender shell as the actual figure. But looking at the actual artwork, yeah, I think we're probably going to get a monster version, which I am A-OK -okay with. But then what does that mean for characters like Skullgrim? But overall, this artwork is pretty good. It does what it says on the tin, and it pretty much just solidifies the product as itself. We'll probably get more artwork in the same vein later on down the road. But for now, this I think will do. And so the first bot we've got is actually Bulkhead, and it's one that... Being a Transformers animated fan and casual observer of Prime is a pretty good character, solid overall and seemingly consistent in both characterizations in both shows, but developed in Prime, let's just say. You've got a thick, sturdy body, 
which looks like it's very well made, very solid. But again, those hollow parts in the legs, especially at the bottom, could be a bit of a faller in making you think it's going to be more solid than it's actually going to be. But the uh, kind of forest green works well, I think, especially with the head kind of gives him a kind of worker vibe, like he's actually wearing some kind of hard hat on a job. In the second image, we've got his canopy in alt mode, I think, used as a shield, which is a clever use of, I guess, uh, parts forming. You've also got his signature mace ball on the other hand, which I'm gonna guess is a port on the underside to just slide into the hand much in the same way we got with a couple of the Earthrise figures like Trailbreaker. Um, you can also see his gun on the back, which again, like with the blaster images, and I think it was Eject or Rewind, one of the two, the clear plastic gimmick of energy weapons comes into full effect. You've got what looks like a Gatling gun with made out of clear plastic, or clear blue plastic, sorry, with obviously painted parts to just make it pop or emphasize a little, especially against the blue background that they've chosen, because otherwise that would just fade very much into obscurity there. But overall, he does look pretty solid. He looks like he's got all the more modern joints, and hopefully this will be a breakout favorite and not just something that's left on the pegs at the end of the year. His alt mode is very bulkhead, very bulky kind of does what it says on the tin again. The canopy or back of the truck, I thought was supposed to look like material at first, but I think that's just the sheen of the plastic. I could be wrong, but he does look good. He does look good. It's well sculpted. You can see a little windscreen wipers on the front. The doors picked out. There's what looks like a rope and crane on the front. Can't complain. Can't complain. It looks okay. Next up, we've got our first Decepticon that we're gonna look at just for today. It's Kickback. Now, I feel like we just had these guys in stores with, I think the Prime Wars trilogy and it kind of went into Siege. I think we kind of had the last of them right about Power of the Primes, if I remember correctly. But yeah, we've just had core class versions of these so to get a deluxe with how they've been downscaling yeah it's going to be a deluxe price point more of a uh, core class legend scale in guessing this is just speculation but yeah he looks pretty good he's got two clear sabers which i'm guessing attach in bug mode but again his back fins for grasshopper mode his front chest and the weapons all in that clear plastic in keeping with the gimmick of the energy weapons. I'm really hoping it's not going to end up like Gold Plastic Syndrome. Jokingly said earlier, but if the material isn't that pliable, if it's that hard kind of plastic, it is going to eventually break. And you will see in 10 to 15 years, a whole bunch of these guys on eBay with broken weapons. The detail in his legs, chest, eyes, where there needs to be a little bit of color, it does look good. Um, again, promotional shots are just meant to emphasize how good the product's going to be. So in hand, it might feel a bit different, but it looks good. I can foresee a problem with the arm joints as the wings are connected to them that they could probably be a bit loose, maybe, but fingers crossed hoping for the best that's all we can do and in grasshopper mode he does look a lot better than the uh power of the primes i believe probably wrong titans return i'll probably put what it was he was originally and it might feel a bit different but it looks good i can foresee a problem with the arm joints as the wings are connected to them that they could probably be a bit loose maybe but Fingers crossed, hoping for the best. That's all we can do. And in grasshopper mode, 
he does look a lot better than the uh, Power of the Primes, I believe. Probably wrong, Titans Return. I'll probably put what it was he was originally in down here, because I can't for the life of me remember offhand right now. But he looks good. The detailing on the wings looks specifically good. It really does have that kind of blown glass effect that wings tend to have stained glass stained glass not blown glass well all glass is blown but the stained glass effect on the wings looks really good um the clear i'm not really sure i think they could should have kept it with the same color as the weapons purple but you can't complain you can pretty much see how the transformation is going to go with the arms and the legs kind of curling up and just laying in flat it's an Insecticon, but I can see at a lower price point, well, a lowish price point, people are going to probably want to army build these guys or just add them to the existing Insecticons they've kept from the previous lines of generation. Next, onto the other prime controversy uh, people have had a bit of an issue with RC. Um, <laughs> RC, I didn't really get a good grip with the character watching Prime. I only watched the first season fully but she looks good um when making figures you can tell what they're going to go for in the future if that makes sense with repaints and i can really see this mold being reused as a uh, uh, war flame or flame bird the decepticon counterpart to rc from prime i believe or it was in the idw comics again offhand just roughly talking i can't remember but i can see that being a repaint and it's one that i would probably pick up in the decepticon repaint rather than rc she looks good but i'm gonna stick with crimea for the blue bike character um rc for me as a generation one fan will always be a pink car so one i'm probably gonna pass up but she looks good the alt mode again it's it's a bike uh her hands are evidently just poking at the back of her torso but the handlebars the bike shield the wind uh the rear view mirrors the lights on the front i can tell some thought has gone into how this looks or should look uh everything looks neat and compact the energy weapon does become kind of I know a half shield for the back, but it looks good. It's not for me, but it's good. I like it. Yeah, the colors work. The black and blue I always find in Transformers colors really do work well. So I'm not going to get it, but I like it. <laughs> now on to the one that has people, again, a little bit divided over. For me, it kind of looks like there's a lot of third party engineering with small mushroom pegs and especially the pin joints but we've got drag strip i know the combiners we've just got through combiner wars it feels like and we've still had some up to power the primes with volcanicus and then the seacons and uh what's the one? again completely forgetting but again i'll probably put down here what I'm forgetting and I'll probably say it later on in the video as well. But yeah, drag strip, big yellow race car. Um, a lot of people had issues with the head with this, but I like the head. It's generation one. It's an orange sideburns, purple head with purple ears and a red visor. It's, it's drag strip. It's the original design of the toy. It looks pretty good. Uh, the detailing is good like on most of them actually small amounts but where it counts small pipes uh, linings engines it all kind of it feels more well thought out than possibly maybe kingdom again the big word in there is maybe it is i could be wrong but here we have him with his two weapons i like how they look like they've been painted either purple on black or black on purple but again, he looks like he's got all the good articulation. Um, 
as I said, the small mushroom joints, mushroom pegs in the arms, kind of reminds me of a third party Transformer figure. They might have employed some third party people from other companies for Hasbro that have thrown their engineering ideas into the mix. But he looks solid, he looks good. Again, I think the shoulders are on ball joints, so they might not click into place, so you might get a bit of movement when you move the arms, but I, until you actually have the figure in hand, for now, it's just speculation. It looks good. I'm hoping the yellow isn't eye-gougingly bad, but this is definitely one that I'm going to pick up because the combiners have always been a good thing, and they've always been something that appealed to me, especially the Decepticon driving team, the Stunticons, uh, aerial bots, you know, those opposing sides that were normally Decepticons are air based and Autobots are ground based. Switching it up always felt a bit dangerous, and I always liked those two combiner teams. His alt mode is exactly what you'd expect it to be. It looks like it folds down very neatly, and it looks like they've used, to me at least, a little bit of engineering from a wheel jack or um, the Sunstreak or Wheeljack mold. I could be wrong, but that's just, it, it, it has that feel. And if I'm wrong in videos, it pops up on the re on reviews later where it's nothing like that at all. I'm wrong, I'll eat, I'll eat my own shoes. <laughs> now moving on to another one that has cult favorite status. And there's a couple of people uh, reviewers online that mention him as one of their favorite transformers if not favorite uh skids <laughs> yeah uh skids we've already had a masterpiece and a masterpiece retool um and now we're getting a mainline's generation skids uh i'm i sound more excited than i am i have no affiliation with skids i have no feelings one way or the other but yeah getting into the picture he's got a nice head sculpt it looks like he is going to have a flat back of the head like with a lot of toys from the 90s and early 2000s when if you remember the engineering their heads were on flat plastic pieces that just folded down and that was part of the transformation he might be on a ball joint with just that separate but that's what i can see just from this image again with the pin joints mm, with smaller limbs, I tend to worry, especially with how they do the hips and elbow joints on some of them now. Kind of worrying. It's it's one of those gold plastic syndrome things that I worry. Is that going to break in five to ten years? Is that still going to be usable? If I pick it up, is it going to disintegrate into dust? But as a blue, black and red car, he looks good. The head sculpt is good. The detailing is again picked out really small and subtle ways. The stripes on the windows uh doors look good again that looks like it is just clear plastic uh same for the back and i'll get to the back in just a second because i've got a lot to say about that but for overall headlights lines detailing especially in the legs is all good it's it's solid his legs look specifically solid he looks like he's going to be a very bottom heavy figure um playing into that he does look like he's going to have a very hollow midsection. And that is part of the course with a lot of the more modern Autobots and car formers. But this one looks exceptionally, exceptionally hollow. And as good as the detailing is and the sculpting and his energy weapon, which I assume you can use as an axe or a gun... It's one of those dual things that I think he has a port on the end and a port where the axe head is. It looks good. Multi-purpose. Always down for multi-purpose weapons. Always down for good clear plastic molding. It works. Again, it skids. His alt mode was never anything flashy. He's basically a family, small family SUV or in a city car, it's it skids. It's it, he's a little boxy dude. It's nothing spectacular. You do get a bit of a better look at the energy weapon, and it looks like it does break down into two separate pieces, because that axe head 
from the previous image looks a lot shorter and it looks like there's a connector port to turn it from a gun into an axe. So there's a little bit of versatility there. Um, you can really see his legs and arms tucked in there real snugly. So I do get it. You do need the hollow gap in a certain area of the figure in order to get it to transform correctly and make it work. But for me, I may pass over skids depending on how good reviews come out of him and how good he looks on the shelf. Uh, he may be one I could pick up and then two weeks, two months, however long later, decide not for me. We'll see. Again, he looks really good. It's a promotional shot. They've lit it well. They've coloured him well. Uh, they've thought about what pose is. So they're all selling themselves pretty well. Uh, it's just a case of money and interest. Now here we get into the... Uh, weird flip side uh, generation 2 optimus prime i got for christmas back like 92 93 maybe 92 but this one for me it's using a lot of the engineering if not all of it just with a few changed up parts on the shoulders from the earthrise optimus prime um or kingdom optimus prime i forget which line or was he split like blaster anyway you can tell some parts have been remolded, but it's the basic same engineering and the same proportions. Brand new head sculpt, I believe. Uh, he looks a bit more regal here, but this speaks to me. It's It speaks to me on a level that uh, Blaster does. Uh, he's one of those characters that if you're connected to him nostalgically, just like the Skids or Bulkhead, uh, any deviation from that iteration will piss you off basically and I like saying that deviation from iteration I think I think I found a catchphrase I don't know yet but yeah here he's kind of obviously going to be a leader class figure with the trailer but he's got kind of a energy weapon sword shield uh, the shoulders do look like they open up to reveal clear blast effects or clear weapon ports inside i guess that's an imagination thing you have to imagine that there's weapons in there but it looks again like that shield and that sword are gonna be able to disassemble and reassemble so mixing a man mixing and matching the energy weapons that was almost a mouthful so mixing and matching those energy weapons are probably going to be part of that gimmick, especially if they use the same clear colored plastics as they use for, say, the Autobots and the Decepticons. Because I've noticed the blue plastic was prevalent on Bulkhead, RC, Skids, and now Optimus Prime. So it may be an intercompatible, if that's even a word, uh, with each other. And that might be part of the selling point of the gimmick. Uh, it looks to be that way so far. Again, speculation. Could be wrong. But here we've got his base mode. And it looks pretty, pretty good. Uh, he looks exactly like he did. Just a more modern update from the original toy. Um, the battle station looks a lot like the Commander Class Rodimus Prime that we've got recently. But he looks good. Uh, I'm thinking those weapons do disassemble now because I can see that shield and that sword piece separate on the base mode. So I'm thinking a lot of what my speculations are are probably going to come to fruition in some way, shape or form. Now the next images are just of the waves overview of what is going to be coming. So we've got Blaster, obviously, Bulkhead, obviously. Uh, Prime Soundwave, which I'm not too familiar with, but as a Soundwave fan, it's probably going to be very difficult for me to pass that up. Uh, Geaxis, Generation 2, if done well, was a very good visual villain for Generation 2. Very 90s. Uh, being a 90s kid, again, it may be one to pass up or just if on clearance seeing. Maybe. Maybe. The... Um, Voyager class 
Armada Starscream and Beast Wars Inferno. Probably two I'm going to pass up. Uh, Armada was not part of my sphere of interest. Uh, most of the Unicron trilogy wasn't. Um, Beast Wars Inferno, I had the toy as a kid and I loved it. But being older and being more on a budget, uh, <laughs> can't get all the Beast Wars figures. So I feel like I don't want to do what I did as a kid and just pick and choose from different areas. I want to have a complete collection of what I want. So if I get Inferno, I then have to find all the other Beast Wars Decepticons, so or Predacons. So yeah, there's that. So then we come to leader class, kind of doing these out of order. I should have done Deluxe first, but um, obviously in Wave 1 we've got Optimus Prime. Then we've got another Galvatron, which might be a retool, uh, just in more Prime. I think that's what that stands for, the PR. But we will see. There's a couple of Galvatrons, well, about three, I think, out now. Uh, two of which I definitely want. Um, I already had the purple, but it's the Marvel Comics one that I think a lot of people want. Obviously, next we've got Blitzwing. Uh, that's a must. Uh, Blitzwing was always good. I remember him from uh, Desertion of the Dinobots. Always felt like he had a bad attitude. Always preferred him over Astro Train. And the last Astro Train we got was amazing. So maybe Blitzwing will blow this one out of the water and he'll just be a retool of Astro Train, but I'm hoping that Hasbro can pull this off and make a great Blitzwing. Again, Dragon Megatron. I think that's from Beast Wars 2nd or Beast Wars Neo. I could be wrong. I probably am wrong. But again, one that I'm probably going to pass up because leader classes, I tend to pick very carefully over what ones I get. So probably one that I'm going to pass up. And then Motor Master as the commander. Now, if I'm going to get Drag Strip, if anyone's going to get any of the Stunticons, you kind of have to get Motor Master. And the last Motor Master we got at a retool of Optimus Prime, so I'm not really sure how it's going to work if they're going to retool that Prime figure into a combiner, which would probably be really difficult. But I've got my fingers crossed on this side. Really do. Now we get into the Deluxes. Um, wave 1, we've just seen. Uh, wave 2 is Prime Knockout which I'm not too familiar with. I think he's a Decepticon. He may have shown up a bit later than when I watched, but I don't really remember him. Next, we have another Alita one, which if it's good, yeah, it's it'll be a pickup. Uh, Tarantulas, mm. Wild Rider, yes. Uh, as I've just stated with Moat Master, the Stunticons are definitely my bag, baby. So, uh... They're going to be a collection completer. Now, Wave 3 is a bit weird because it's one of those weird things of just the names alone without images sell me completely. Which, being a fan of anything, if you have information, only part of the information that you need. If it's all good information, you're going to lap it up. And Point Blank, Crankcase, uh, an Energon monster, and Dead End. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much game over. Uh, that's probably going to be about 80 to $90 that I'm never going to see again. But I will not regret it. Obviously, Wave 4, Breakdown, you'll probably get another Energon monster. And maybe a Elite 1, a character that is from the previous wave that may not sell as well or sell too well that they'll have to restock on. So they'll probably wait for sales figures to come in before they make that decision. But yeah, Breakdown, it's, it's, it's a must. Like with the Deluxes, further down the line in Wave 3, you've not only got Skullgrin, but you've also got another Energon monster, which will probably be a variation of that same mold that we'll get as a Deluxe. Again, may tie into the gimmick, and there'll be a lot of clear plastic in there. Uh, Energon being the key word to take away, as Energon is kind of like a translucent substance in the original cartoon. So, yeah, maybe. So yeah, I think that's enough information and me rabbiting on uh, to digest for now. But those are just my thoughts. Uh, feel free to comment in the comments down below if you think I'm right, I'm wrong, you like, you hate. Go nuts. Yeah, uh, hopefully it's not another four months before I do anything of this kind ever again. Uh, I have more time now.
so maybe. Uh, <laughs> let's hope that 2021, like 2020, can go off into the distance when 2022 gets here and we will never speak of it again and everything will be right and everything will be perfect and I'm really shooting higher than I think that anyone can reach right now. Um, good luck. See you later, nerds. <laughs>